What's up? What's up with you and your main dude? <laughs> Lately, because the weather's been changing and we're changing and transitioning over from spring to summer and in California, summer is like really hot to fall, which usually is kind of mellow to all of a sudden we have rains coming and chill coming. So I've been taking the porch or the, you could say my little Sukkot or my little tabernacle out here under the umbrella that uh, had been growing phenomenally with plants and God has used them to allow hummingbirds to visit me, birds to sing, for me to sit and share the goodness and the wonders that God has, you know, to just really drink in how God grows us. Because a lot of times, if you don't have your hands in dirt, if you don't really tend a garden, you don't understand the balance between light and watering, soil, plants, bugs, uh, containers, heat, chill, and all the different varieties of things that God keeps in balance that plants grow when they are given what they need. Just like you are. Just like I am. And just like Jesus wants to always be there for us because he knows exactly who we are. I mean, dude, if I'm dressed like this, or man, hey, you my man, you know, I'm dressed like this, or Chicano man, we, you know, we got some things going, you know, and like we drive down the road and we got like, hey, we got a little dingle balls in the car and we say, yo, yo. or if you're like, you know, boy, they, such a deal, you know, we could be like, hmm, Jewish? But whatever it is that you are, God made you that way. Now, you may have adapted and adopted some strange ideas in presenting yourself to the world. Even as I shifted this hat over, all of a sudden now I can hear in this ear. And now I hear better in this ear. Strange how that kind of focuses and funnels everything. And now I can't hear in any ear. <laughs> but in whatever way that you present yourself today, present yourself to the Lord, you know. Share with Him the reality of what you're doing. Like, today I'm busy cleaning, so I have on my, my holy shirt, and I have my hat on, you know, and I'm ready to tear into the porch and clean it up. Okay, maybe I've already torn into the porch and now I'm cleaning up. <laughs> but in a new year, I always take the time in the fall to take the Rosh Hashanah, the time of days of awe and the days of, of reflection, the turning, the teshuva of the Jewish nation, of the people of God that are called Jewish that have turned you know, from their ways and focus in on God. I like to take that time to turn my household around, to turn it to a cleansing time, to look at, you know, all the summer things and set them aside and get ready for winter because it's sometimes a long haul through winter. And I know, like, being an Internet-based ministry that, you know, I've been on the Internet for a while now, that a lot of times that's when people gear up, believe it or not, into where they need more from the Lord because they're either at work and they're getting their Christian fix on real quick, you know, from their cubicle. Or they're, you know, wanting to be touched by God in some way because they have a need that, you know, they just can't share with anyone else. So there's a balance between having, you know, the Internet as a ministry and having the church meet that need. There's a joining together of these things, you know, in technology and in personality that God brings together if you allow Him to lead you by trusting Him with all your heart and you don't try to put your own understanding on it, but in all your ways you acknowledge Him and let Him direct your path. If you do, then I think that He'll take you through whatever it is you're going through today because I know that this time of, oh, you could say 10 days, you know, the, the time of Tishri, the time of September now as it is ending and October's beginning, a time of consideration for some Jews as the 
Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement comes, that uh, I personally, as a Christian, as a born again Christian, but also as a person who has Jewish roots, who is a very <laughs> connected with Klal Israel, you know, with with the Jewish nation, with the Jewish people, with who I am and my heritage, that I'm very well aware that we as Jews feel at times a little withdrawn, a little contemplative, a little maybe introspective, you know, to consider where we come from and how failing that sometimes we are in what we do, but how wonderful it is that God has chosen us, not the Jew, but chosen all of us who know him to restore us to a relationship with God our Father. Because that is what Jesus wanted us to know more than anything else, was that the work that he's done brings us to the love of God that was shed abroad for us to experience that we would come to the Father with our heart, with our soul, with our mind, with our strength, and that we would not only know Jesus in a personal, intimate way, but that we would know the Father. And there are times where maybe at this time of year, especially, I don't look for you know, Jesus to return in the rapture. Sometimes I just look at the Father and just want to be mindful of Him in a more intimate, personal way. Maybe you're that way today. He knows the way that I take, and when He has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. He knows our frame. It does not afflict willingly nor grieve the children of man purposely. The foundation of God stands sure, having this seal. The Lord knows them that are His. And let everyone that names the name of Jesus depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the Master's use and prepared for every good work. You know, there's that... Contradiction that a lot of people try to make into something it's not. They, they like to get into this idea that, oh, well, I'm saved by grace, so I don't have to do nothing, which is one contradiction. Oh, well, I have to do something, so I do works, which conflicts with grace, which is another contradiction. The two are not battling each other. If you are saved by grace and that not of yourselves, then it is a free gift from God, and God bestows it how he chooses, when he chooses, the way he chooses. And the way that he chooses sometimes is based upon how we act and react to God in a personal, intimate relationship. That relationship does have works in it. Not works of righteousness, which we have done, but works of demonstrating the love that God has for us and how we demonstrate our love to him. And those are the works that the legalist wants to see from the grace person more so because they are caught up into a works trip. And sadly, they think that it adds to their righteousness when we know that it doesn't add righteousness, but it considers and causes us to become less a vessel of wood, hay, and stubble, but more a vessel of gold and silver, of being tried by the Lord, of asking Him to examine our ministry, to examine our hearts, to examine our lives, to choose and look at our attitudes and to change them for us because we can't do it alone. So in this time of humility, of recognizing that you're a sinner, all of you, as I am, saved by grace, that there's nothing that you could have done to save yourself, recognize also that once you are saved, there is things that God asks of you. You have given him your life. There is not a question of, should I go out and cast out mir or do miracles in his name and, you know, start a ministry and build a church and do all these wondrous works for Jesus in his name and not know him. But when you know him, then you love him. And when you love him, you'll choose to not disappoint the Father. And in so doing, that is some of the works that we are told we should do. A work would be like looking at yourself and saying, hey, you know what? i got a bad attitude. God, help me to change my attitude today. God, I have been judgmental. Help me to be less judgmental today. 
If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Remember that. If you begin to remove those things that trip you up, that cause you to stumble, put away your porno. Put away your selfish attitude. Put away your alcohol. Put away your drugs. Put away all these stupid things that affect the physical body, but might condemn the spiritual body to hell, should it not be removed from your life before you die. He shall sift, or he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. I will refine them as silver is refined. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. And I will say, It is my people. And they shall say, The Lord is my God. Because the Lord is master of your life. And what's got mastery of your life right now is based upon the choices you've made. Are you an addict? Are you a sex addict? Are you a drug addict? Are you an alcoholic addict? Are you a religious addict? Whatever is controlling you is your addiction. But if the Lord is your control, as you are loving Him and trusting Him with all your heart, and not your own understanding, then you would call Him Lord, for He is the master of your life, not your life being mastered by some addiction. Show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy paths. Moses said unto the Lord, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, Show me now thy way, that I may know you. And he said, My presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Be not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Thou wilt show me the path of life, and in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. I will instruct thee, and I will teach you in the way which you shall go. I will guide thee with mine eye. The path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. So you see, it really doesn't matter that... Uh, you put your hat to the left, you put your hat to the right, you put your hat on, forward or back, or that you just stay here with, you know, messed up hair and kind of looking really scuzzy. <laughs> because the bottom line is that if you're with Jesus today, how can you be with Jesus? Ask. That's simple. Just ask the Lord. Hey, God, be with me. Bingo. Guess what? There he is. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. Is that not what God has said? And did he not say it to a Christian? So today, if you choose to walk with the Lord as he has said, then don't be consumed by the outward appearances of people as they look to you to be, oh, that dude's a gangbanger. <laughs> or as we put on our hats or styles in order to be cool, sophisticated, ties for business, shirts for work. Or if we are about preparing for the winter that's coming. Rather, look at the heart of a person. And if it isn't perfect, their heart, recognize that Jesus is in there starting to work and developing a person into becoming like Him. And that you could possibly touch them in a special way today. That you might be God's ambassador to share the mercy, and that if you're meek about it, if you're kind-hearted about it, if you're tender, if you're humble about it, they just might listen to what you have to say. But if you're out there 
claiming you're the only one and stomping on other peoples in the name of what you call the Son, then you've missed the point of why Jesus died. You've missed the reality of what this time and this season is all about. While it is good you know, to consider the feast days and the fast days that are holy unto the Lord that he gave to the children of Israel to remember forever and that Jesus will fulfill himself as Messiah in all the seven feasts unto the Lord. God also did not base our righteousness on keeping a holy day. He didn't say, look, if you keep these days, you're holy to me. No, because our holiness isn't based upon an action that we can do. Our holiness is based on a action God does in us and causes us to be made holy. That's what makes holiness in us complete. Because Jesus said, I am the completion of the law. In me, all things are fulfilled. And if we are in him, then the law is fulfilled. And we are no longer under the law, for we have been crucified with Christ, and we no longer live, but Christ liveth in us. So the life that we now live in the flesh, we live by the will of the Son of God who died for us and gave himself for us. So if we're not living in our own flesh, but we're living in the perfect Son of God, then perfection has come unto us, and we need to do only one thing in order to receive it. Trust in the Lord with all our heart. Lean not in our own understanding. In all our ways, acknowledge Him and let Him direct our path today. For surely, isn't it better to let God lead? Then, me?